Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at metal reactivity and we're going to be looking at this thing called the reactivity series. So by the end of this session you should be able to do the following things. You should be able to describe the metal reactivity series and what it shows and explain and give examples of metal displacement reactions. So what is the reactivity series? Well essentially the reactivity series lists metals in order of their reactivities compared with other substances. So simply put, the, or, the, the reactivity series puts the metals in order of their reactivity. And this is a comparison, at least at GCSE level, of how they react with other things. So as we look at our table over here, Towards the top, we have the most reactive. So you may have seen these things and their reactivity. Potassium and sodium and calcium all react vigorously with water producing hydrogen gas and forming a hydroxide in solution. We'll see those in the periodic table. And as we go down, we then have carbon, which is an important comparison because we can extract metals using carbon as long as carbon is more reactive than the others. So carbon can be used to extract zinc, op zinc from zinc oxide, iron from iron oxide, tin from tin oxide, and lead from lead oxide. And then we also have hydrogen, because that can be used to extract metals, uh, to, use to extract things like tungsten from tungsten oxide, although we don't worry about that here. And then we have the, the least reactive at the bottom. We've got copper, silver, gold, and platinum. And certainly, Gold, platinum and silver, these three metals are so unreactive that they are found as pure metals in the Earth's crust. In other words, we can actually dig them out of the ground or, or we can pan for them. We might get them panning for gold. All of our other metals tend to be found as oxides or sulfides and we have to extract them uh, some other way. In class, we're going to be using the reactivity series here to predict and also make observations from experiments to see where this uh, order of reactivity came from. So the experiments we tend to see in class and in the lab observe that we can see a reaction occurring if we have a more reactive metal with a less reactive metal. And the bigger the difference, normally the more vigorous the reaction. Our key rule for all of this is that a more reactive metal will displace or react displace less reactive metals. And we'll see what we mean by that by looking at a couple of examples here. So in our first example, we have iron oxide and aluminium. Now, aluminium is more reactive than iron and therefore the aluminium displaces the iron and reacts to form iron oxide. So therefore a reaction occurs. Let's look at our other example here. Above we had iron oxide, so this is an oxide, could also have been a sulphide, that tends to be what we find in metal ores. In the example below here we've got copper sulphate. Now copper sulphate is a metal salt and we we'll oft often see reactions of metal salts, examples being sulphates, chlorides and nitrates, but we see the same thing occurring. Iron, in this example, I'm just going to use the chemical symbol of Fe, is more reactive than 
than copper to you, and therefore a reaction occurs. And these difference in reactivity is really important, and we'll see that it gives rise to lots of chemical reactions and is actually the core principle behind things like the batteries in your mobile phone and how we can actually generate power and also how we can use these ideas to extract metals from their metal ores and make useful things out of those pure metals. For the time being though, that's the end of the lesson. We'll have a quick recap to see what we should have learned from here. So, metal reactivity, the reactivity series, you should now be able to do the following two things. Describe the metal reactivity series and what it shows, and explain and give examples of metal displacement reactions. And uh, we'll see lots of these, as I say, in class.